Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Welcome, my friend. Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes, the radio arm of Bible Tracts Incorporated there, just as my announcer said. The main thrust of our ministry is to publish gospel tracts, and that word tracts is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. We're talking about a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. We have been publishing those for 80 years, and in a moment, I'm going to be urging you to get some gospel tracts from us. We have a sample packet containing one each of all of our English tracts that I would love to put into your hands. And right now, we are in the process of trying to get ourselves together so that we can print 1.3 million gospel tracts inside the country of Pakistan. We've been publishing tracts there for a number of years, and every year that number tends to go up and I can guarantee you as those tracts are printed and given out that hundreds and thousands of people will come to know Jesus Christ as Savior. As a matter of fact, in the last two years, two and a half years, about 200,000 people in the country have not only received Christ as Savior, but those are the ones that have been publicly baptized, owning Christ before their countrymen. That is great stuff. That's great news. That's what gospel tracts are accomplishing in places where they are being used. Right now, we're trying to raise $22,000 to complete that printing. If you'd like to help us with that, we would sure appreciate that. Well, get your Bible open to Leviticus chapter 5. Many years ago, a local church with which I was acquainted had an usher who was stealing money from the offering plate, and evidently it had been going on for a while. He was taking the offering up in the balcony, and on the way down from the balcony, he was pilfering money. Well, eventually, as the Bible says, be sure your sins will find you out, eventually he was discovered and he was confronted. And to that man's credit, he openly admitted his sin. The problem now was, how do we deal with the man? How do we make things right? Well, as the pastor and the church leaders discussed the whole matter and praying through things, one of the deacons suggested using Leviticus 5 as their model, as their plan of action. Because of the man's open and sincere confession, the church did not press legal charges. What they did do was bring it before the church. The man confessed his sins there, and then the cost of the man's crime was explained. The church voted to follow the plan of the church leaders, and the man was carefully, lovingly restored to fellowship. So what is it that this church found in Leviticus 5? An Old Testament Leviticus passage helping a local church in this dispensation? Can you think of it? Well, get your Bible and join us, please. Leviticus and chapter 5. I have a gospel tract here in my hand, one of the 41 tracts in that sample packet I want to give to you. This one was designed to use with people that serve you, whether it's at a restaurant, whether it's somebody doing your dry cleaning, your plumber, the man working on your car, whoever the case may be. You get to rate their service. But there are four way grades of uh, you can rank them with. The top one is the greatest service in the world, but you never check that one. And the reason is this that the track explains for that person to give you the greatest service in the world, they would not only have to serve you, but then also pay the bill. And nobody does that, but the track goes on to explain that Jesus came to do just that. He came to serve, not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom. Jesus offers us the free gift of eternal life, and he says, 
I will pay the bill. Here's a great, great gospel track. I use it all the time. People have come to Christ as I've used this track. Why don't you get it from us? At the end of the program, my announcer will make known to you some ways by which you can give to us your name and mailing address. If you just tell us your name and address, we'll send that sample packet to you free of charge. Or just go to the website, BibleTracksInc.org. Well, if your Bible's open to Leviticus chapter 5, here is how the chapter opens. It says, and if a soul sin and hear the voice of swearing that is giving a testimony and is a witness, whether he hath seen or known of it, if he does not utter it, then he shall bear his iniquity. Or, or if a soul touch an unclean thing, whether it is the carcass of an unclean beast or the carcass of an unclean cattle or the carcass of unclean creeping things, and it is hidden from him, he also shall be unclean and guilty. Go down to verse six. Verse 6 begins this way. He shall bring his trespass offering unto the Lord for his sin, which he hath done. Go now to verse 16. It says this, and he shall make amends for the harm he hath done in the holy thing and shall add the fifth part thereunto. Well, for time's sake, I cannot read all that's here in the chapter that really would be wise to do. But as we come here to the passage, we need to just quickly answer what it was that this local church learned here from Leviticus chapter 5. Well, Leviticus 5 is about the trespass offering. And like the sin offering back in chapter 4, this offering was also one that was done because sin had occurred. But this trespass offering had another component to it. It could also involve restitution, a beloved we need to get a hold of the fact that while some sins are private the only, and only impact you and me personally before God, most of the time our sins do impact other people as well. And if it does, and that person or persons are damaged in any way, then the sinner must make restitution. Look back at verse 16, it says, and shall add the fifth part thereto. Well, that local church worked through the question of how much money the man had stolen over the years, and then they added a fifth part, 20% to that amount. That was the cost of his crime. And trust me, the whole church was strengthened to the godly way this was handled by the pastor and the deacons there at that local church. Now, if you have a piece of paper there, jot down four key words, all beginning with the letter S. These are the words that I use to help me think through chapter five here of Leviticus. The first word is sin. The sin we so easily commit, verses one through four. Then the word sacrifice, verses 5 through 10. What sacrifice is required to be clean? Then the word is shortage. Shortage, verses 11 to 13. What happens when the person is very poor and can't afford the offering? That's dealt with there. And then lastly, my word is the word sentence or the price tag for restitution. That covers verses 14 to 19. Now, let me take a moment and make clear here what the key differences are between the sin offering back in chapter 4 and the trespass offering here in chapter 5 and spilling over actually into the first seven verses of chapter 6. Let me j just give you here four things. Number one is this, the trespass offering applied only to an individual. These are dealing with individual issues here. Number two, the trespass offering was able to be eaten by the priest to help the person, the sinner, deal with the sin issue. Number three, the trespass offering consisted only of a ram, very costly here, only of a ram. And then number four, the sin offering pertained to some misappropriation or misuse of something that belonged to to God. Now, let me be practical here and explain this. My friend, if a person lied in court or held back his testimony that was required in some legal matter, some matter with legal significance, he would have to offer a trespass offering. Why? Because our voice as a person belonging to the family of God, our voice belongs to God, and lying throws dirt on the holiness of God. 
If you touched an unclean animal, you needed a trespass offering. Why? Our body belongs to the Lord. You remember over in Matthew chapter 5, part of the Sermon on the Mount? Starting at verse 23 there, we read that Jesus said that if we were to bring an offering to worship before the Lord, and while they're in the middle of worship, remember that there's a person who has something has ought against us. We are to put down the offering, stop worshiping. We're to go to the person and make things right. Then, then we can offer acceptable worship to God. Well, every time I read that, I have to wonder, I wonder how many times I have offered worship to God that was not accepted because somebody had something against me. I had done something and I had not done some restitutional or reconciliational action towards that person to make it right, whether that person was saved or lost. And... Before I get done, since I'm meddling here, let me meddle a little more. Let me tell you this. I found in chapter 5 and spilling over to chapter 6 that there are some different types of sins mentioned. Some were different because some were done ignorantly while others were done with intentionality. And those done with intentionality needed an offering, but they were not an offering. It was declared not to be a sweet-smelling offering offering to God. God did not rejoice over the need to cover over deliberate, willful sin, but God did provide an offering to his honor, his glory, and our foolishness. I can't come to this passage without also thinking of a verse in Isaiah 53. Verse 10 says this, it pleased the Lord to bruise him, Messiah, Jesus. It pleased the Lord to bruise him, that God has put Messiah's soul to grief when thou shalt make his soul, Messiah's soul, an offering for sin. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. I struggle with that word pleased, but let me explain the word. It can be used of having delight in something, but the word pleased, the basic meaning is that God inclined toward it. God saw it and in essence was drawn to it. There are so many things that people offer God as an amends for their sinfulness, and they are not a magnet to God. The only thing that draws in God, the only magnet that draws in God's grace and mercy to a lost sinner, the only thing that draws in God's grace and mercy to a repentant, saved person when they have sinned, the only thing that draws God in, the only thing that pleases God is the work of Jesus Christ on Calvary. That's what draws him in. Only Jesus' work on Calvary will suffice to draw God in, to be satisfied with the payment and find grounds for to forgive us, the sinner. Friend, if you're listening today, I ask you, have you made Jesus your personal sin offering to God? Have you asked God to draw, be drawing into your life because your offering as the only hope of salvation, the only hope of forgiveness is the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Christ died on the cross to pay your sins. He was buried and rose again to prove his sacrifice was enough. If you've never received him, do it now, right now. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.